Hello everyone, welcome back to Explore Electronics. Today let's learn about structures in C. So first let's understand what is the need of structure. So before that let's go back and recall what are variables and arrays. So we all know that variable is nothing but the name that we give to the memory location where we can store some data. For example if we say int roll number we can store the data of type integer in this roll number variable. Similarly, if we have to store any different data, we have to mention the data type and give a name to that variable. So this is how we can create the variable and use them to store data. Now, so say we have to store the data of 10 students. Then we have to create 10 different variables for each of this. That means for roll number, we have to create 10 roll number variables to store data of 10 students. Similarly, for marks, we, we have to have another 10 variables. So totally, we need to have 20 variables if we are declaring like this. So to solve this problem, we have an option called arrays. That means arrays, we can create one name of the variable which can have the multiple values in it. That means to store the roll number of 10 students, we need not create 10 different variables. Instead of that, we can have one array which is of type integer and we are giving a name say roll number and we are mentioning the size as 10. That means this array called roll number can hold 10 roll number values which is of type integer. Now again to store marks of the students, we can have one more array of type float. Here also we are mentioning the size as 10. So this array called marks can hold 10 different values of float type. So again here it is a tedious job to create different arrays for different data types. So arrays we know that can store multiple values in a single variable but these multiple values should be of same data type. That means in roll number we cannot store marks of a type float. We can only have the roll number of type integer. So if we have to store different kinds of data, we need to again create different arrays for this. So this is also not a suitable solution. We have a solution for such scenarios that is structures. So structure is nothing but it is a collection of logically related data. So we are not relating data in terms of the data type, but we are collecting the data based on the logical connection between them. Say for example, if we have to store uh, the data related to students. Say we need to store name, roll number and marks of students. So what we can do is we can create a structure that means we are creating our own data type called student and we are saying this structure can hold name, roll number and marks. So all these three are different data types but still we can group them and we can store the multiple values in it. Uh, that is why we have structures and programs uh, which is easy to store and manipulate multiple datas of different data types. So just to recall variables can only hold one data of single data type. Now arrays can hold multiple data of same data types but structures can hold multiple data of multiple data types. So now let's learn more about the structures. So here they say that structure is a collection of logically related data of different data types and it is a user defined data type. That means the user will define the way the structure is needed according to the program. For example, we just saw we, need, we had a structure of students in which we mentioned that we need to store name, roll number and marks. So in the same way, according to the requirement, we can write the structures. And in case of structure, we have to design and declare a data structure. That means as we saw in the previous slide, we have to create this design. That means according to the requirement, we have to create this and then we can use this structure. That is what it means. We can also say that it is a mechanism of packing data of different data types. So we know that in structure, we are mainly concentrating on storing the logically related data, which can be of different data types. So this is, for example, we can have a student name, roll number and marks combined together and store them. So this is what structure means. And this is the declaration of structure. So if you can see here, this is the keyword that we have to use. So first of all, before writing uh, a name, we should use this keyword called struct, which instruct the compiler saying this is a structure. So this is the keyword. And then this is the tag name or structure name. 
so we call it a stagnin and inside this that means inside the flower braces we will have the members of structure so these members are nothing but the data type we are going to store in this structure so we are going to store name roll number and marks so name is of type character roll number of type integer marks of type float so this is our structure now suppose you want to store the data of different students say you need to store the data of three students so how can we store that that means how can we initialize this structure with values so one way of doing it is first after we declare the structure we have to create the object of the structure that means again we need to use the struct keyword and the name of the structure that we are going to create this objects for so this s1 s2 and s3 that we are seeing here are the objects of this structure student so to mention that we have to write the name of the structure this is the tag name and the object name so this we can give any name that we want i have for example given as s1 s2 and s3 and now inside this s1 we are initializing these values so uh, say we are initializing first uh, element here would be stored as a name and second one roll number third one as marks so this is how we can initialize the values into the structure so keep in mind that these are the objects of this structure so in our next video let's learn about some of the rules that we have to follow while initializing the structures and we also learn about compile time and runtime initialization and let's also look into a sample program using the structures thank you